Salatu Salam Rasulullah. All right, so uh, the Boolean expressions. We seen these. I mean, before just before the the Eid break, uh, we're going to be looking at, at at some of the other things that we can understand from this, these Boolean expressions. Uh, basically, the Boolean expressions are like the questions that we ask in if. So the the question the, that we put between parentheses after an if this is something that we call the Boolean expression. Okay, uh, Boolean because it's either true or false, right? You remember that for a question we always answer it by either saying yes or no, true or false. And this is a Boolean. This is the the the, the, the purpose of a Boolean. No, it doesn't mean only compare. It means just something that has either a true value or a false value. That's all. We use it for comparing because if you compare something, it will tell you yes or no. If this is greater than that, yes or no. But the, the, the Boolean in, in itself, this is a data type. I can declare a variable to be Boolean. And we are maybe going to see some examples later on. It's like int and double, it's, it's a data type. Yes, it is a data type. So, uh, let's, let's start uh, first of all. We said that the Boolean expression is true or false, and these are these uh, Boolean operators. So there's these comparison operators, like greater than, lesser than, is equal, with two equal signs, or different. And there's this logical. Logical, which that we've seen, and. This question, uh, A less than B, and B less than C. If you remember, we've seen some examples like that with this double and symbol. And this is the, what we call the logical, because it's and. and there's other logical operators, which are or, not. These are the, the ones. So for the comparison operators, this, the greater one, greater than, and this is how we use it in Java. And this is an example. Same thing with greater or equal. You notice that the equal is after the, the, the greatest symbol. And you remember, we've seen that before. Lesser than, same thing, lesser or equal. We start always with the lesser, the symbol, and then the equal is the, uh, uh, the end. What about this equal? You remember, with the equal in math, we need to represent it in double equal sign in Java. Because one equal sign means assignment. Take this value, put it inside this variable. So we had to put two, double e two equal signs to mean, is this equal to that. So now we're asking, is x, whatever is inside of x, is it equal to whatever is inside of y plus 2? I don't understand your, your, your question. You said in the formula, which formula? Equal, one, one equal sign? Okay, if you write, for example, if you talk to me and, and you write something that is mathem in the mathematical notation, you're writing this is one uh, with one equal sign. Yes. So this is math, right? With math, you write this to mean, okay, this is equal to that. But in Java, you cannot use this notation. Because you we use a Java notation for, for the equal sign. That means the same thing. Okay, for the math, you can write something like this. But for Java, you cannot. Because in Java, it needs it to be something special. So that's, that's why the one equal in the math representation, we need to use these two equal signs for the Java notation. We convert. Whatever, every time I have to do, is this equal to that? I just have to remember. I don't need to, I need to use two equal signs instead of just one. Because one, actually, it has another meaning in Java. It means take this, put it there. If I put only one equal sign, then the meaning is different. I'm not asking a question anymore. I'm saying, OK, calculate this and put it inside of x. How, however, this is not what I want to do. I would like to ask, is this equal to that? So then I, with the double equal sign, it means, is this equal to this? And then it's either true or false. What about different? you remember the different? If I'd like to ask, is x different than y? How can I write it in Java? Well, this is how it is written. Not equal. This is how we read it. Not equal. This is the symbol for the exclamation mark, which means not. The opposite of. The opposite of equal is not equal. So this is what the, we need to, to, to see it. Because, I mean, this thing 
is alone it has a meaning and we're going to see it inshallah what's the meaning of this one alone separated without the equal sign so we can write something like this and now I'm asking a question is y multiplied by 5 diff not equal to 10 so I'm asking this question that either it's true or false so this is the comparison operators and there's some other operators the logical operators and before going to talk about that let's talk about this double equal sign because it's something special especially for the text this is used for numbers only if used for texts like string this doesn't work and this is an example of why it doesn't work if you write something like this what do you think is the output of this thing first of all let's try to understand line by line I'm using this string s1 equal new string Java so this is s1 let's say and it has inside of it Java now I'm declaring string s2 equal new string Java again same thing s2 which is another variable and with the same text Java now I'm printing something on the screen what, I'm, what am I printing I'm printing this result of this question what is the result of this question either true or false is s1 equal to s2 is s1 equal to s2 well we tend to say yes because we as well we can see that inside of it is the same thing but the answer to this is false this will give you false and this will give you true why because when you compare this but this is specially for a string it checks not only the content it checks the variable itself is this variable the same as this variable so they are not the same variable they are two different variables that's why they are going to be different so this is gives you false as you can see here written let me just clear this out so this gives you false because s1 is not the same variable as s2 but now if I do something like this it gives me true because s1 is the same variable as s2 well if it's a number exactly if it's a number if I, it was like int here int there it's going to be the same all right but this is because of string a string is a special data type it's not like a, a primitive data type <coughs> yes so always with words we use only one string which string we use what one string. no 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 I just we don't have to use it this way there's another way to compare between texts uh, we're going to see that inshallah maybe later on but just I'd uh, just like to you to notice that this equal sign it works but not with strings with strings you have to be careful with it there's uh, something else that we can use and uh, maybe we're going to be talking about it and this is the time for to talk about it there's this method called equals or equals ignore case and this is how it works the question should be like for example if between parentheses I put something like this s1 dot equals s2 now I'm asking is s1 the content of it is equal to the content of s2 now I'm comparing like Java with Java is this equal to this yes so in this case it is going to tell me yes okay you understand the double equal sign for the string here it is and then I can actually have two options do I like to compare without regardless of the case is cap a capital letter or lowercase is the same or no a capital letter for example if Java was lowercase here with this one this is going to be false because the, ca the lowercase j is not like this uh, cap capital J What do you mean compression? Like okay. Yes, if I'd like to compare between yeah. strings, yeah. I need to use either equals or equals ignore case. If I don't want to, if if I don't want, if I would like to uh, consider the capital letter and the lowercase letter to be equal, then I'm going to use ignore case let me just maybe be more specific okay imagine that this is Java all lowercase 
okay? If I'm using equals, this is going to giving me false. Because this is capital, this is lowercase, it's not equal. If I'm using equals ignore case, this is, true. this is true. Because this is the same letter, just one is capital, the other one is lowercase. And if because I said ignore case, so it's going to be true. All right? So this is just specially for the string. Actually, it's more than just for the string, but for the primitive data types, when we say primitive data types, we, what are the primitive data types? The basic ones, the int, double, float, long, these are primitive data types. And these other ones, like string, these are class data types. And we're going to, inshallah, to, like scanner. You know, scanner is a class data type. It's a different data type. Inshallah, we're going to be getting into the details of that when we're going to be creating our own classes. So this is the idea behind the double equal sign. So just to remember, for with this comparison, this is OK for numbers and other different data types that are primitive, but not OK for strings, for example. Now, there's another type of operator, which is the logical operators. These logical operators are either the end or not. You remember the exclamation mark? This is the end that we use. That means, uh, let me give you an example. If we have this P, which is true, and Q, which is true, P and Q is going to be true. Let's say, for example, is 5 greater than 10, and uh, let's say tw 12 greater than 20 so if this is true and this is true if I put an end is is this both of them true yes yes if I put end it's true so now imagine this P is like some question and Q another question so if the qu the result of this question is true and the result of the second question is true if I put an end True with true will give me true. True with false, false. False with true, false with false. Everything is going to be false. Because this end operator is going to give me true only if both cases are true. So, just to summarize and give an example. This is 5 greater than 10 and uh, 12 greater than 5. So which case, which scenario are we in? This is? This is false or this is true? Okay, so this is false. So I'm going to be either in one of these scenarios. And this one? 12, is it greater than 5? So this is true. One is false, the other one is true. The result is going to be? If one of them is false, don't think too much. One of them is false. With the end, everything is false. Because I cannot say that 5 is greater than 10 and 12 is greater than 5. I can't say that. It's going to be false. So you need to rem memorize though that if you did not know it before. What about the or? If this is true or this is true. One of them is true. So this is true. One of them or both of them. Whatever there's one true is enough. Two is okay, but it's better. But one is enough. But if both of them are false, it's going to be false. What about this one? The opposite of P. So if this was true, then whatever was false becomes true. So this is the uh, truth table. Opposite of makes something, if it was true, it becomes false. If it was false, it becomes true. So let's just look at something interesting. Uh, maybe let me uh, yeah, show some of these uh, things that we've spoken about last time, just to rem remind you. Remember when we were trying to ask a question if this less than that and this, for like for displaying the A and A plus and A and B and C? We said that if 
uh, the number is greater than 70 and less than 80, I cannot do something like put a question like this. I have to break it into two pieces, uh, which is something like this first part, which is this one, and the second part, which is this one. As you notice, I just put between them and because I would like to 15 to be less than x and x less than 35. So this is the correct way to, to write it down. Yes. Yes. Uh, maybe you might miss this, but uh, yeah, okay. There's something called this short circuit and complete evaluation. Okay, this is something that I'd like you to uh, just pay attention to it. Because this, we said that this is the symbol for the end and the symbol for the OR. Actually, we can use only one of them. And it has a different meaning that we use both of them. Uh, let's talk about that. If I use both these symbols, what, what it does mean, for example, if x was equal to, uh, let's say, 5, okay? What is the result of this operation? This Boolean expression has, now I'm asking a question, is x when it equal to 5, what is the result of this? In order for me to understand, to answer that, I need to find the result of the first one, and then the result of the second one, and then compare with the end, based on the table before that we've seen before, like this one. Okay? I see which one, which situation I'm in, and then I'm, I will decide based on this, <coughs> what is the right answer. Now imagine that this is, this is P, where is P? Oh, this is P, and this is Q, and I have this end. P, is it true or false? 15 is less than 5? So this is false. 5 is less than 35? True. So if I have false and true, it will be false. Now, to understand the difference between this and having only one, one of them, is try to answer, to answer this question. Do I need to ask, once I found that this one is false, do I need to ask a question here? No. I don't need. Because if one of them is false, it's false, the rest is false. So why should I lose time and keep asking that question? Like I'm saying. If this one is false, I don't need to ask this question because I know khalas, one of them is false. I'm sure with the end, if one is false, the result is false. So I don't need to, even if there are 20 of, of those questions, and, 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 one of them is false, everything is false. So I don't need to keep asking. So if I'm using these two, this is called the shortcut, short circuit. It means if one of them is false, well, don't need to keep asking the rest. Khalas, don't ask, stop here and just do whatever you need to be doing. Don't keep asking the other questions. So the computer will just ask this one and stop here. Only if it's false. If it's true, he needs to go and ask the second question. If x, for example, was 20, this is true. It doesn't mean that if this is true, I'm not going to ask the second question. Since this is true, I don't know. Maybe this is true or false. I, I, don't, I need to ask that other question. But if it was false, I don't need to ask another question. I know with the end, one false means the result is false. So that's the short circuit. Because the, if this is false, then I don't need to ask the second question. This is not evaluated. <coughs> and the same thing happens with OR. You remember with OR? It's always true, except if both of them are false. So for example, if I have one of them is true, if, I have, if this was R, and this is true. With R, one of them is true and the result is true. So I don't need to evaluate the rest. It's going to be fine. I will stop. But if I put one equal sign, if I put one, this end, 
sorry, I said equal sign, but I mean th the end symbol. That means even if this is false, I'm going to ask this question. I force it to add. That's why they call it the complete evaluation. I, I always ask all the questions if I use this end. Why would I use the end? Why it makes more sense that use this short circuit? Because sometimes, you remember this operator, this x++? plus plus. The plus plus, you remember, it adds one, right? What if I have something like this? Uh, plus plus. I would like this to be incremented. So if I use this short circuit, if this is false, this incrementation will not happen. But if I use only the one of them, I'm always asking, even if this is false, I'm keep asking, and before I'm asking, I'm going to increment. So that's why, I mean, actually, it's after asking, I'm going to increment. So it is going to, I want this to be executed. So in some cases, just not to get too confused, in some cases, I might want to execute or to evaluate all the expressions. So I need to put this one symbol and symbol. And if I don't want to have, I'm not in that scenario, which is probably 90% of the time, maybe 10% or 5% of the time, you might need something like this. But 95% of the time, you always want to do this short circuit because it's more convenient. So you just, if it's false, you don't need this to be evaluated. But you need to just understand, if you see a piece of code with two double equal signs of with one, so I'm, I'm, I keep saying equal signs, I don't know why. With one double uh, and symbol and uh, or, or one of them, this is going to be make a difference. So the short circuit is when I have these two, and this um, complete evaluation when I have only one instead of this. Or same thing for the or. For the end, it, uh, for the not, we don't have that because it's not the same thing. Okay, one probably last thing is the precedence rule. You remember the precedence rule? We've seen the precedence rule with the plus m and, and div multiplication. Which one comes first? If we have a plus and minus and multiplication division, which one we start with? We start with the groups that have precedence, which are the, the multiplication division and modal division. These are the, the first one. Then, if they are on the same level, we start from the left to the right. But what about this and and or? So this, these are the, the different priorities. If there is some parentheses, we start with the parentheses first. The most inner ones. So if I have like many parentheses, we start with the one inside. Then we start with the not logical operator. Then we have this minus, this uh, unary minus sign. Uh, minary, uh, sorry, unary operator. You know when I say minus two, this is the different than five minus two. For us humans, we can just okay, this is minus two. We can make a sense of it, and we see it like it's the same. But actually, it's not the same. This operator takes only one number, and this operator takes two numbers before it can make this operation. So they are different. So that's why they represent them differently. This minus sign, this is the, the minus sign, for example. And this one, this is the one that needs like two numbers. Five minus two. So this is different than this one. So when we have this, this arithmetic, that means this minus starts first. And then we have this multiplication or division or multi division. It doesn't mean that we start always with multiplication, you remember, right? If I have like 5 divided by 2 multiplied by 3, which one I start with? No, the division. I start from the left to the right because they have the same weight. This, uh, they have on the same group, we start from the left to the right. We don't start always with the multiplication. And then there's this re relational operators, less than, greater than, and you notice that I start with this one first, with then the equal or not equal. Then at the end, this is, these are logical operators. These are the last ones that are evaluated. OK, this associativity means 
when we are on the same level, we start from the left to the right or right to the left. This is the associativity. And the precedence, which ones we start first? And when we are on the same level, we talk about associativity. When we have different levels, this is precedence. Like the, if I have like multiplication and, and uh, addition and these symbols, these are different precedence rules. For the associativity, this is when we have the same, uh, the same rule. Like for example, the one that said 5 divided by 2 multiplied by 3. The associativity says that I'm starting from the left to the right. This is called the associativity rule. The sets with two operators with the same precedence are evaluated from the left to the right. Left to the right. Let's have a let's have a, take an example. Okay, so help me with this. Where should I start? For the parentheses, the inner ones, okay, th which is? So we start with 15 minus 10, all right? Then, so this is going to be 5, okay? So now I have <coughs> another inner one, which is this, this one over here. So it's going to divide 20 by 5, which is going to give me 4. Then... I have two, these two parentheses, and I have this operator, and then this not, and two parentheses again. Which one should I start with? From? From the left. So, I have 20, uh, sorry, 4. Is it greater than 7? False. So this gives me false. Then I go back to the parentheses, the next ones. Is 20 less than 20? False. And then I have this not false. Yes. Not false. True. Then I have false or true. The result would be true. Very good. So just don't get confused to see how the computer will, will check that. And that's it. That's about these Boolean expressions. Uh, what do you mean? But 